Go love your own enemies. Don't be loving mine. My enemies are the theocratic fascists. I, I don't love them. I want to destroy them. Child, made in the image of God. Oh no, you're not. You're a faggot. And you can't join your church and you can't go to heaven. This is disgraceful. It's inhuman. Okay, I, uh, I think it's time that I reveal something to you guys. It's extremely serious. Yeah, this is you need to steal yourself for this because it's about as serious as it gets. It's like really serious. Okay, um, I've put off I've put off expressing this to people because of the gravity of the seriousness here and the complexity of it. You know. It's not so much complex as it is serious. It's it's kind of a mixture of complexity and serious. But definitely I think seriousness overshadows the complexity. You can get around the complexity. You know, but the seriousness you can't get around. That's how serious this is. Okay. So, um, I'm going to I'm going to I decided after a great deal of uh, soul searching, pardon the, the, the reference to imaginary things, and now the cat wants out, which is also a very serious thing, very serious. Um, after a great deal of soul searching, I decided I was going to reveal this serious thing to people because I really want to be honest with people. I want, I want to be. I don't want to be ashamed anymore of who I am. So I just feel like I owe it to people to, to tell them things, you know, tell them everything, not try to keep things from people, you know. So, yes, this is serious. Wow, just really, really serious. Okay. But sometimes you just have to open up. You just have to open up. And there are lots of subtle nuances to the implications of this revelation that I'm about to give. Lots of subtle nuances that could could make you think things that aren't true. Jump to conclusions, perhaps, that are not true. You know, people tend to do that. They, they judge and they generalize and they put people on boxes. You might be tempted to do that to generalize or put me in a box because it is complicated. It takes a great deal of mental <clears throat> conditioning to really get into the meat of the the, the crux of uh. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm just gonna spit it out. I, I feel like, you know, rather than beat around the bush, which I, I don't ever do that. I don't I don't beat around the bush. I get right to the point with my videos. Right to the point. I just want to say that I am so amazingly... Oh, God. I, I don't even know if I can say this. This is so... So serious. So... Serious. I am... Beyond words amazingly grateful to Steve Shives for the shout out. Really I am. I mean, oh my god. I'm so amazingly grateful. I, I <laughs> Deity Free D. This is the YouTube channel of, you guessed it, D. D is a former Christian, now an atheist, and uh, a lot of her atheist-themed videos view 
the problems of religion or the debate between atheism and, and Christianity from that perspective, that, that perspective of a former Christian. Uh, so many of the most insightful atheist commentators or critics of religion are people who are former followers of that religion themselves, and Dee certainly falls into that category. Um, and in addition to her videos about Christianity and atheism, she's also a writer. And many of her videos uh, pertain to her writing. Uh, she has a novel underway uh, that she reads from quite frequently. She also does videos just sort of talking about the writing process, uh, how she creates characters. And it's really, really interesting. Uh, if you are interested in writing, if you would like to hear the perspective of a writer um, share their creative process and share what's important to them as, as a creative person, as an author. It's, it's a really interesting thing uh, to watch. Now, her, her novel that she is writing now that she's sort of sharing in her videos is a fantasy novel, Not My Cup of Tea, but I know a lot of you are fantasy fans, and I would highly recommend you checking out Deity Free D's channel, not just for the atheist content, but also check out what she's reading from her novel, and maybe it's your cup of tea, and maybe you'll enjoy it. Maybe, maybe you'll discover uh, a new aspiring author that uh, you can enjoy her work. I think that would be great. And uh, D it runs a really cool channel, and I'm very happy to give her a shout out. So check out Deity Free D. Well, that's it for me, everybody. I'm about to close this shit down for another week, but before I do, I want to remind you to please leave a comment on this video and ask me your question for next time. You can ask me a question about anything. Nothing is too serious, nothing is too silly, and I will answer as many of your questions as I possibly can in the next video. So I'll see you then. Take care, everybody. And then at the same time, I'm like, people are going to go to my channel and they're going to expect. There's the cat. People are going to, I need a letter, but I'm in the middle of trying to get this out. It's just been eating me alive since I saw the shadow yesterday. And I just have to express, you know, all these feelings. But yeah, people are going to come to my channel and they're going to have this expectation of, you know, this. I am not Steve Shives and I'm sorry, but I have to let the cat out. So I'll be right back. I am not Steve Shives. <laughs> I don't even pretend to be a great thinker. So people coming here to expect brilliant, brilliant analogies or, you know, cunning intellect. <laughs> no, that could have happened. Um, so please don't, you know, you might be disappointed is what I'm trying to say. I'm not on par with people like Matt Delahunty or Seth Andrews or... Steve Shives, okay? Um, I'm just me, kind of kind of getting old, brains kind of, you know, ee, sometimes there, sometimes not. I have, I have a hard time <laughs> pronouncing big words, okay? But, but, but what I am is somebody who I am absolutely 100% convinced that Christianity is a fucking lie. It is a deception, a very harmful deception that has caused considerable damage to not only our society and the world, but to people's lives and to my life. People are, you know, come to me, well, I want to, uh, where do you get your information? You know what? It took me several years of scouring you know, online, finding finding books, finding people's recommendations for books, reading various things, reading articles. I didn't keep a log where every article was that I read or every single... I have the books. They're in storage now because I don't like having books lying around. Once I read them, I usually put them away. All I can say is I went researching and I am thoroughly convinced by what I've read. Other people should research too. And this is what I try to say on my channel. I'm not going to say, well, you know what? You're wrong. Even though I think people are wrong. And I guess I do say that they're wrong. But at the same time, I don't threaten people with torture forever if they don't think just like me. 
I understand that people are going to be superstitious and believe in imaginary things. <laughs> you know, there's nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. But what I try to encourage on my channel simply is that people research. Because I went, oh my God, over 35 years of my life blindly assuming things. Assuming God exists, assuming Jesus exists, assuming the whole story in the Gospels were tr was actual true truth. You know, assuming the events in the Bible were historical. All these things. Assuming that the Gospels were written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the actual disciples who walked around with Jesus. All these things I assumed. I assumed people had researched and verified that the Bible was 100% accurate and true. All these assumptions. And I lived over 35 years. That's a huge chunk of my life. Some people don't even get to live that long. That's how long I walked around with these assumptions. Thinking it was all true. You know, looking at myself through this filter. Oh, you know. I'm... Where is my value if I can't measure up in any way, shape, or form? Christianity was one thing that really hurt my self-esteem. I had several things attacking my self-esteem, but I think the most, and I think the word is insipid, but I could be wrong. Again, I, I have a lot of words floating around in my head because I like to write, but sometimes the wrong words pop out when I need one. Um, insidious? Um, it's the one that covertly, you know, stealthily gets inside you and you're not really aware because it's disguised with all this happy singing and, ooh, Jesus loves you. Yes. It's such a feel good message, isn't it? But deep down inside, there's this constant pressure to be better, to be good enough. And what is what is this thing you're trying to be? You're trying to be perfection. You're trying to be absolutely Christ-like and Jesus was perfect, right? And nobody can be perfect. So if you already have your self-esteem under attack by other things, it's really crippling to have your even your belief system at the same at the same time as these other things chewing away at your self-esteem. You can't be a good enough Christian. You don't go to church enough. You don't read enough of the Bible. You don't meditate enough. You don't pray enough. You don't think enough. You don't live enough to glorify God. Do you know that everything you do in this, in your life needs to glorify God? I had a pastor at Westgate Chapel actually tell his congregation that. He, he told us that Paleontology was bad. I was an amateur paleontologist listening to this message, and I immediately stopped going to that church. Paleontology is bad. He was mocking the people at the Burke Museum where I used to work because it doesn't glorify God. And I went up to him after the service and said, I think it does. And he's like, ah. you know, he basically said that it didn't. And that's what killed that church for me. I stopped going. In fact, that was like the last time I stepped into a church. That was probably the beginning of the end for me. It's like, how can exploring your world and trying to appreciate the complexity and grandeur of the world not glorify the creator of the world? How can that be evil? How can science that's like opening the, 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 the layers of the onion, peeling back the layers to discover the magnificence of the creation of God. How can science be a threat if it's truth? How can this be, how can knowledge and understanding and discovery and research, how can these things be a threat if something is true? Truth would welcome these things. Truth would encourage these things. Anyway. So this is supposed to just be a little short video I wanted to make to people because, oh my God, thank you, Steve. I, I don't even know how many more subscribers I have gotten in the last couple days since you gave your shout out. And I know people are going to drop off when they when they see a few of my videos and realize, okay, this, this woman is a complete mental case. <laughs> And that's fine. That's fine. You can, you can, you don't have to, nobody likes 
not everybody likes everything. Not everybody likes a middle-aged woman who isn't hot. I'm sorry, I'm not, never have been. Sitting here talking about stuff that, you know, whatever. Not everyone's gonna like what I do, or what I say, or what I think. And that's perfectly fine. I don't, I used to really take it personally, now I don't really care. You know, I feel like there's lots of really wonderful channels on YouTube you can be spending your time on and enjoying. And I think it's great that they're so diverse. There's something there for everybody. And, you know, but here I am, this is what I'm about. I, I don't, I try not to say, well, you know, you're, you're stupid, although I, I do think that there's a lot of dumbing down. People have to be dumbed down. Learn how to be like, you know, it's interesting, the, the cult teaches that you must be like a little child. What are little children? They are so gullible. They will believe without, just because somebody says so, they'll <laughs> believe it. You must be like a little child. Well, gee, isn't it interesting that this cult encourages this kind of mentality? They, they encourage their members to be gullible. And interesting that if you look up the definition of gullible in the dictionary, it's pretty much the same thing as the definition for faith. I don't think that's a coincidence. So yeah, uh, I, I think people should research. I think that what beliefs you, you glom onto and carry with you and make a part of your identity throughout your life is really important. You know, people do so much research when they buy a house or when they buy a car. They research, you know. They get the car facts. They see what the history is. They, they, they do the work. At least if they're smart, they do. You would think that a belief system that basically you, you attach to yourself as part of your identity, people would research that too as just as seriously or more seriously. You know, you look at a car, is that me? Is that, does that reflect my personality? Is that, you know, because technically getting in a car is like putting on a garment. You know, it's, you're, you're basically, you know, how do I look in this? But they don't do that for, for these, for these belief systems. They, they look, it's all, this one, okay, yeah, well, I'm assuming it's true. Isn't it important that it's true? See, I didn't, I didn't really, I just assumed. And I lived a lie for most of my life. I lived a lie. Not only did I live it and believe it, I walked around and I looked down my nose at other people and I judged other people as lost and blind and unenlightened. You know, I arrogantly just assumed that my God was, of course, the right God, the one true God. And my beliefs were the right beliefs. And all those other beliefs were so wrong. Based on what exactly? Because, ooh, my book says so? Yeah, that's all it took. That and gullibility that I was encouraged to have since I became a Christian when I was 12 years old. People, you know, if they research and they research like I did and really research even the stuff you don't want to read, even the stuff that hurts and upsets you, if, you're, if your beliefs withstand the research, if they hold up under scrutiny, great! At least then you can feel like, okay, I'm on the right track now. I believe, you know, there's, I have a good reason to believe what I do. You know, I don't understand why people are afraid to research. And I'm sorry, going to your Christian bookstore or reading Christian literature, people who are scientists, I have to do this, scientists, Christians, um, that isn't, putting your, yourself, your beliefs to the test. And that's all I try to encourage on my channel is prove it. You know, you say that gods exist. You say this God exists. You say it's your God and not some other God. You say your religion is right and all these other religions are wrong. Prove it, you know? Go find the, the evidence and bring it to us atheists who are just waiting for it because nobody has bothered to yet and prove the claims are true. Prove it. Instead of walking around assuming and wasting your whole life following after something that maybe just covertly might be fucking with your self-esteem. I have never, people, 
Christians like to say, oh, what did, what did God do to upset you so much or let you down or disappoint you? Why are you so angry with God? Why, okay, Diane, you sound so lost and so sad. Diane, you're so sad. No, I'm really not. I get sad about things like the fact that I haven't been able to find a full-time job. I get angry about things and sad about things that get me down, you know, ageism is everywhere. That gets me down. But on the whole, I am not like I used to be three, four years ago. I, I feel self-sufficient. I feel independent. I feel strong. I don't feel like I need somebody to love me to be a good, whole person of value. I don't feel like I have to have constant affirmation that, oh, I'm okay. I'm a good person. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm a really good person. I, oh, you know, I, I don't need to hear that all the time. I don't need to have people tell me that all the time. I don't need to jump through this hoop and this hoop and this hoop and this hoop. God, say that ten times fast. To, to feel like I'm a good person. I know I'm a good person. You know what I did? This is a good example. The other day, I worked for Munchery, and we make meals, and we deliver meals, okay? And every now and then, on the, on the, on the, in the staff room, they'll have food out for the staff. It's usually surplus stuff. They had this big bin of chocolate chip cookies, and oh my god, the cookies that Munchery puts out are to die for, okay? So there's this bin of chocolate chip cookies, and here I am, Miss Greedy Chocolate Lover. I grab four of them and shove them in my pockets on my way out the door. So I'm doing my last deliveries, and I pull up, and I'm, I deliver my, my food to the whatever, and as I'm coming back to the car, I go by these two black guys, they're probably my age or older, and they're loading up a truck. And they're like, hey, how you doing, as I walk by. So I go to my car, and I'm, I see those cookies, and on an impulse, I grab two of them, thinking, oh, you know, I'm fat enough. I don't need these four cookies. They're just going to make me even fatter. So I grabbed two of them and went up and gave them to these two guys. You know, um, I didn't, I didn't jump through any hoops to make myself feel better. It was just an impulse, and and you know, I I walked away feeling good, like, hey, you know what? I did something nice. A random act of kindness. You don't have to jump through hoops to be a good person. You don't have to read such and such verses and pray so much a week or go to church for so many times a week or hear such and such message or, you know, believe the right thing. You're a good person inside. You just have to realize you're a good person inside. And that's kind of what I'm finally coming to understand about myself. And I am happy. I am happier now, here, here now that I'm ancient, than I probably have been my whole life. My whole life. I feel comfortable in my skin. I don't have to wear makeup anymore. Newsflash, most guys don't really, women are so obsessed about makeup. Most, most guys would probably like you to look more natural. This is my experience anyway. But yeah, I don't care so much about what I look like anymore. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not a, uh, <laughs> whatever. I don't care. That's, that's the beauty of it. I don't feel like, it's like, I don't give a damn what people think. I'm not here to please everybody and look, look good enough for people or whatever. And it's a wonderful feeling. So Christians who assume that an atheist is miserable because they don't have God, oh, you're just so bad. You know, it's exactly the opposite. There's nothing more liberating than to realize that you can be good all by yourself. In fact, that you've been good all along, most likely. And it's actually very easy to be a nice person and a good person. And just, it's actually kind of easy to like yourself, too. Once you stop seeing yourself through these filters that these cults put up. So, okay, this has turned into a fucking long video. It was actually not supposed to be very long. I just wanted to say hello to my new subscribers and tell them, thank you, thanks Steve, but to tell anybody who's new here that it's okay if you don't like what you see. I'm not going to feel bad. I understand. I get it. But, you know, even if you if you come and go, oh, she's, you know, whatever, don't, not, not for me. 
thank you for stopping by. Thank you for giving my channel a look. And that's appreciated. And the fact that, um, you know, you, you come to YouTube and you check out people's, what people contribute creatively is appreciated. So that's it. I'm going to end this now. <laughs> See, wasn't that serious? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. You have a good day. I am uh, absolutely convinced that the main source of hatred in the world is religion. And I think it should be religion treated with ridicule and hatred and contempt. Let's get to